Welcome to Untested Builds, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Like and subscribe for a new build every week. Comment below to suggest your favorite fictional characters and join the Patreon to vote between Predator, Danny Phantom, or Sokka from Avatar The Last Airbender. Today we're building a magical man who throws cards from League of Legends. Keen minds will remember that we recently built a mutant man who throws cards, also known as Gambit from Marvel Comics. They also both happen to be master thieves. But in that video, I actually mentioned that Gambit wasn't really the card throwing build. That guy can throw electric coconuts and supercharge a pencil if he felt the need to. But this week, we're building Twisted Fate, who's the actual card whisperer and world famous master thief and gambler. Not sure why anyone ever sit at a poker table with this guy if they know who we are, but we'll just ignore that plot hole for our purposes. For our goals for this build, we're more than just a card sharp. We have cards that are literally sharp, focusing on throwing weapon attacks so we can deal a deadly hand from a distance. Second, our relationship with cards borders on the insane. When we focus, we can literally feel vibrations from the future through the cards to avoid danger. Lastly, our skills go beyond simple cardomancy. We can imbue magical energies into our cards to produce a wide range of effects that only we can access. For our stats, we're starting with 18 dexterity. We do the sleight of hand thing and thrown weapons are also dexterity. Intelligence and charisma at 14 takes smarts to cheat, but you need a good poker face to pull it off. Wisdom at 12, gotta stay on your toes during a heist. Constitution and strength left alone, we're more of a dandy. We can leave the thickness to our partner. For our increases, we're increasing a bit of everything except for strength, focusing mostly on dexterity and charisma. For our skills, we're taking trained in diplomacy and performance to really flex that charisma mod. Acrobatics, society, and stealth so we can move through enemy social circles and heists with equal grace. And lastly, occultism, nature, and religion for some river people magic. For our legendary skills, we have Arcana thanks to our perfected magical technique and legendary deception and thievery to lie, cheat, and steal our way through the world. Little Tobias was born as a human, but he's from a people with latent mystical abilities. Half-elf humans gain low light vision in addition to the usual free ability boost. We'll take the gambler background for training in deception and games lore. We also get the lie to me skill feat so we can use our deception DC in place of perception to suss out any lying NPCs. For our ancestry feat, Sayak Ancestry lets us do some card based divination during our daily preparations to spend an action to roll a d8 up to three times per day. On a 6, 7, or 8, we get a plus 2 circumstance bonus on our next skill check, a plus 1 bonus on a 3, 4, or 5, nothing on a 2, and a minus 1 penalty on a 1. Cards are always right, sometimes we just don't read them correctly. This is kind of awkward because I was really sure Twisted Fate would be a rogue, but Twisted Fate isn't really stealthy and his attacks have nothing to do with sneaking and really, he just wants to be kind of a fancy gentleman. Level one swashbucklers gain panache for a plus five foot status bonus to speed and a plus one circumstance bonus to tumble through actions whenever we successfully tumble through an enemy space or make an equally daring acrobatic check until we perform a finisher or until the encounter ends. Precise Strike for an extra 2 precision damage on our agile and finesse melee attacks while we have panache and an additional 2d6 precision damage on a finisher attacks and then confident finisher to make a melee strike that on a failure still deals half our precise strike damage. We use a swashbuckler style for more options to gain panache. Fencers gain panache whenever they succeed on a feint or create a diversion action. If we have our weight, we're going to be attacking at range at all times so get ready to use that sleight of hand to get your opponent's eyes off you for a few seconds. For our class feat, Flying Blade opens up our precise strikes and finisher abilities to be used with thrown, agile, and finesse weapons in addition to the usual melee strikes, which is going to come in handy because once you're level 2, we can have Fane's Fulbure, which is a stance that lets us use a deck of playing cards to count as either throwing darts or throwing daggers. This feat is more than just a reflavor, this essentially lets you have 52 daggers for negligible bulk that you only have to etch runes into once. Whether you choose darts or daggers is up to you. Darts have twice the range, but a smaller damage die. You also get the choice of piercing or slashing with daggers. For switching up our deception ability too, the charming liar feat allows us to make an impression using our deception skill instead of diplomacy, so long as we're actively lying to our target, which is likely since the only other person we trust is our good old buddy Graves. Level three swashbucklers gain great fortitude for expert fortitude saves. Vivacious speed to increase the speed bonus we gain from panache by five feet, increasing as we level, and we gain half the speed bonus even when we don't have panache. Opportune repost lets us attempt a melee strike or a disarm attempt as a reaction whenever an enemy critically fails a strike against us. Not really that great for us since we don't use melee weapons and have no strength modifier to speak of, but it's not the first time we got a class feature that we don't necessarily need for a build. We also get stylish tricks for extra skill feats at 3rd, 7th, and 15th level as long as they're either in acrobatics or deception since we're a fencer. Normally, leaning too heavily on creating diversions is a bad idea because the creature we try to deceive gets a plus 4 bonus on subsequent attempts. 
The confabulator feat keeps our panache going by reducing the bonus our enemies gain from repeated attempts to only plus two, increasing the plus one once we're a master in deception and no bonus at all once we're legendary. We get our basic boots with the fleet feat for even more movement speed to keep kiting those bruisers. The charmed life swashbuckler feat gives us a plus two circumstance bonus on a saving throw as a reaction before we attempt the check. The pickpocket feat allows us to steal objects that are closely guarded without taking the usual minus five penalty. And once we're a master in thievery, we can do it during combat too by spending two actions instead of one and taking the usual penalty for some extra gold in the middle of the fight. Not too helpful unless your GM also opens up a shop for you in the corner of the battlefield. Level five swashbucklers gain weapon expertise for expert proficiency in simple and martial weapons and unarmed strikes and the critical specialization effects of those weapons as well. We keep simple with this build since daggers and darts both inflict 1d6 plus our weapons attack bonus of persistent bleeding damage. The supernatural charm ancestry feat lets us cast charm once per day as a first level spell to force a will save against a creature, forcing their attitude towards us to increase to friendly or helpful, preventing them from making hostile actions towards us for an hour. We've got card throwing and some minor divination, but we really aren't the magical gambler archetype just yet. So let's change that right now. The scroll trickster dedication gives us the trick magic item feat for free to cast spells we normally couldn't from scrolls and we gain a plus two circumstance bonus on the check to do so. A scroll is basically just a piece of paper with a spell written on it. Who's to say the spell can't be written on a piece of card stock and small enough to fit in a deck box. Not sure if I'm building a league champion or a Magic the Gathering player, but whatever. The recognized spell feat lets us attempt to identify an incoming spell we see the activation of as a reaction, identifying the spell on a success, and also gaining a plus one bonus to our AC or saving throw against the spell on a critical success. Probably save this for when there's a spell attack coming and just use your charmed life for the saving throws. Level seven swashbucklers gain weapon specialization for an additional flat two damage on our expert weapon strikes and evasion for master reflex saves and critical success results on regular successes. For our stylish trick, we're picking up Slippery Secrets to make a deception check against the DC of an incoming spell or magical effect attempting to read our mind. For our general feat, Subtle Theft lets us steal or palm an object without breaking the undetected condition we gain from creating a diversion. We also give potential onlookers a minus two penalty to their perception DCs whenever we successfully steal. We stop relying on booster packs and just start printing our own proxies with basic scroll cash. During our daily preparations, we create two temporary scrolls, one containing a first level spell we've learned or a common spell from the core rulebook, and one containing a second level spell with the same restrictions. We're trained in Arcana and Nature, so Arcane and Primal lists are open to us. We'll grab Chilling Spray for our red card to force a reflex save in a 15 foot cone, dealing 2d4 cold damage and imposing a minus five foot speed penalty if they fail. Regaining mana isn't just really a thing in Pathfinder, so for our blue card, we're just gonna focus on dealing more damage. Acid Arrow makes a spell attack roll to deal 3d8 acid damage plus 1d6 persistent acid damage to a creature unlucky enough to be within 120 feet. The experienced professional feat gives us our loaded dice by giving us the regular failure effects on critical fails when we roll to earn income using our game's lore skill. Level nine fencers gain exemplary finisher to make creatures flat footed until our next turn whenever we successfully land a finisher on them. We also gain swashbuckler expertise to increase our class EC to expert. The Heir of the Sayok Ancestry feat turns our D8s we normally roll from Sayok Ancestry to D4s. We still get the minus one penalty on our next skill check if we roll a one, but we gain a circumstance bonus equal to the result if we roll anything else. We gain our gold card with the Stunning Finisher class feat to force a fortitude save against our class DC on a hit, giving them stunned one on a fail and stunned three on a critical fail. We get back to thieving with the quick unlock feat to pick a lock as a one action activity instead of two because nothing is more embarrassing than having the party wait around for three rounds while you fumble with an average lock. Level 11 swashbucklers gain vigilance senses for master perception proficiency. Continuous flare is actually kind of good for us. Even when out of combat, creating a diversion gives us a plus one circumstance bonus to actions that would normally grant us panache once we succeed on the check. The incredible scout feat lets our party benefit from our knowledge of the future. When we use the scout exploration activity, our party gains a plus two circumstance bonus to their initiative rolls instead of the usual plus one. Now if we could just keep ourselves from high hailing it at the first sign of trouble. The magical shorthand feat comes in handy for us if we ever want to make scrolls of spells from outside the core rulebook. With this, we can learn arcane spells in just 10 minutes per spell level rather than an hour per spell level. And we can learn spells in our downtime, making a check similar to earn income to gain a discount on the gold cost of learning the spell. Which means we can open up our list just a bit more for expert scroll cash to add a scroll containing a third level spell during our daily preparations in addition to the first two. Magic Missile heightened to third level sends out two wild cards for each action we spend to cast it that automatically hit any number of targets we choose dealing 1d4 plus one force damage, combining if multiple hit the same target to overcome any resistances. 
Level 13 Swashbucklers gain Light Armor Expertise for Expert in Armor Defense and Expert Light Armor Proficiency. Weapon Master increases our proficiency in simple and martial weapons to unarmed strikes to master and improved evasion for legendary reflex saves, regular fails on critical fails, and half damage on any effect from a reflex save. The Pinch Time half elf feat allows us to cast Haste once per day as an innate spell to become quickened for one minute, gaining an extra action each round that we can use for a strike or stride. Now we can always make sure we're in a decent position before we need to trick a scroll or cast a spell. Of course, we still need to spin an action to pull the scroll out of our deck box, or do we? The skim scroll feat lets us draw a scroll and attempt to trick it all in a single action. We're so good at tricking scrolls that some people think we can just actually do magic. The charlatan feat lets us perform a deception check against onlookers perception DC whenever we cast a spell from a magic item, and if we pass, they'll think we're the one using magic and not just waving fancy paper around. We can also make a fourth level scroll during our daily preparations. Clairvoyance is the first half of our ultimate destiny, creating an invisible floating eye anywhere within 500 feet and allowing us to see from that eye in every direction for 10 minutes. This isn't exactly how Twisted Face ult works in game. There are spells that get us closer, but this will probably be more useful for things like seeing in the sealed vaults, being your own lookout during a heist, and cheating at a poker game by placing an eye behind the high roller at the table. Level 15 Swashbucklers gain Keen Flare for critical successes on natural 19s. You roll for strikes with weapons we have master proficiency with. Greater Weapon Specialization doubles the flat damage we gain from Weapon Specialization, increasing strikes we make with our Master Proficiency weapons to 6 additional damage instead of 3. We also get another stylish trick we'll use for our discrete inquiry, so when we attempt to gather information, we hide the purpose of our inquiry when speaking to NPCs. If anyone else is trying to find out who we are or what our reason was, they'll need to beat the greater of our deception DC or the usual gather information check to do so. You can't really call yourself a master thief if you leave a trail of breadcrumbs on accident while planning a heist. During a heist, however, we want to leave no stone unturned, and we can't hang around too long. The expeditious search feat lets us fully search an area in half the usual time, essentially doubling the speed we can travel while making sure an area is fully searched. At level 16, we gain a 5th level scroll during our daily preparations. We're actually going to inscribe the heightened version of Dimension Door for the second half of Destiny to teleport up to a mile away to any place we can see or have been to in the past. Making this the perfect tool combined with our clairvoyance for infiltration or the ultimate quick escape tool for when things go south. Just make sure you go back for your partner or you might hold a bit of a grudge. The quick recognition feat allows us to recognize spells once per round as a free action whenever attempting to identify any arcane spell since we're a master in arcana. We also get our stack deck with perfect finisher to roll twice on a strike and use the better result because it's always better to be lucky than good. Level 17 swashbucklers gain resolve for master will saves and critical success results on regular successes. For our ancestry feat, Brightness Seeker gives us the effects of augury once per day by spending 10 minutes observing our surroundings with a particular question in mind. Our GM will say wheel if we can expect something good, whoa if there's something bad coming, both if it's a mix of the two, or nothing if nothing is going to happen, or if we fail on our secret check. We also gain call upon the brightness to gain a plus one bonus on a skill check or saving throw while taking the path we looked into with augury if the result was wheel, and the bonus increases to plus two if the result was woe instead. The Unified Theory skill feat allows us to use our Arcana skill in place of Nature, Occultism, or Religion when performing a skill check or activities relating to the Primal, Occult, or Divine Traditions of Magic. Meaning, no matter what traditional spells we prepare as scrolls, we can use our Arcana to trick those scrolls and cast those spells. The Incredible Luck Swashbuckler feat allows us to roll twice and take the better result whenever we use our Charmed Life Reaction. Level 19 Swashbucklers gain Light Armor Mastery for Master Proficiency in Unarmored Defense and Light Armor, and Eternal Confidence to increase our Swashbuckler DC to Master and give our Strikes from Opportune Repots the failure effect from our Confident Finisher, meaning even if we miss, we can still deal half of our Precise Strike damage. We'll take the Incredible Initiative General Feat to gain a plus 2 Circumstance bonus on all initiative checks to make up for not quite taking as much Wisdom as I would have wanted. This also applies if we happen to roll Deception for initiative, which is likely to happen a lot if we really do cheat in games as often as our reputation suggests. For our final skill feat, Legendary Thief allows us to steal objects that are being actively guarded or even worn by taking a minute, remaining hidden for the full duration, and a minus 5 penalty to the check. For our capstone feat, Panache Paragon makes us permanently quickened, granting us an extra action each turn that we can use for a tumble through, faint, create a diversion, or anything else you can talk your GM into giving you Panache for. Which, if you've actually played a character at a max level, you probably have a much better idea of what your GM will let you get away with than I will. But now that we're level 20, let's go over the pros and cons for this build. 
Our main strength is actually our flexibility. Being able to just pull whatever spells we need for the day from all four spell lists is gonna make you a favorite of the party and thorn in the side if your GM is one of those schemer types. Second, we deal some decent damage at range with enough move speed to get in position, gain our panache, and perform a finisher. Third, we've got a bunch of minor divination, meaning your party is always gonna make sure to run the plan by you and probably ask you to do the dirty work too since you're just playing luckier than them. For cons, needing to trick every skull we use means we're limited to one or two action spells during combat. Obviously, you could just take a more traditional spellcasting archetype, but I just couldn't pass up on the flavor of using actual cards to cast spells. Second, even though we do have ways of making repeated diversion attempts more successful, it's still not the most reliable way of gaining panache. Maybe keep a dagger in your offhand so you can faint if you find yourself within melee range. Lastly, we might be good at breaking in and taking stuff, but it's going to be hard to actually have a successful heist with only basic stealth skills at trained proficiency. But how stealthy could you really be when your main partner is a guy with a giant double barrel shotgun? Thanks for tuning in to another build. Subscribe to be notified whenever we post a new build. Join the Patreon to vote between Predator, Danny Phantom, or Sokka from Avatar The Last Airbender, and to download this character sheet and more. Until next time, take care, have a good week, and play more Pathfinder.